I was introduced to radical Islam when I was 10 years old when the Muslims blew up my home as they shouted Allahu Akbar, bringing it down and burying me under the rebel wounded. My only crime was that I was a Christian living in a Christian town. I learned at the age of 10 years old the meaning of the word infidel. I had a crash course in survival not in Girl Scouts, but in a bomb shelter where I lived for seven years of my life, without electricity, with no water and very little food. To get some food, I would crawl out under the bombs and the sniper's bullets to gather grass to eat, and we would crawl to a nearby spring to get some water. Uh, at the age of 13, I dressed in my burial clothes, getting ready to go to bed at night, waiting to be slaughtered at the hands of the Muslims. And by the age of 20, I had buried most of my friends who were killed by Muslims. And we were not Americans living in New York, and we were not British, uh, British citizens living in London. We were Arab Christians living in Lebanon. I come from Lebanon. Many people do not realize that Lebanon used to be the only majority Christian country in the Middle East. We we were open-minded, we were fair, we were tolerant, we had open border policy, we welcomed everyone into our country because we wanted to share with them the westernization which we had created in the heart of the Arabic world in the Middle East. Because of the majority Christian presence in Lebanon, we were good in commerce, we focused on building the country. In a very short period of time, Lebanon became Paris of the Middle East, the banking capital of the Middle East. But sadly, because of our open border policy and our open-mindedness and tolerance and, and fairness, we welcomed people who were not supposed to be in our country in the first place. Muslims used to send their children to study in our universities because we had built the best universities in the Middle East and the Arabic world. They graduated and they stayed and worked in our economy because we had built the best economy in the Arabic world, even though we did not have any oil. But even though we had the problems with the Muslims, especially as the population, the Islamic population grew because of the multiple birth rates, and we, the Christians, started shrinking because we simply do not uh, get married to multiple wives like they do. We don't have many children like they do. So over 20, 30 years of this trend, they became the majority and we became the minority. But we always had the problems maintained between the Christians who have become the minority and the Muslims who have become the majority until the influx of the Palestinians out of Jordan, which we as a civilized country, as an open-hearted country, took them in. Here we took in a group of Palestinian terrorists. Yasser Arafat was kicked out of Jordan when he tried to overthrow King Hussein out of power. But because of the dictatorship of the king, King Hussein kicked them out and actually killed more Palestinians in Black September than the state of Israel has killed in all its existence. We, as a majority Christian country, open-minded and fair and tolerant and multicultural, we were the only Arabic country that took a third wave of Palestinian refugees into the country. Once they came in, the majority of them were Muslims. They put their heads together with the, with the Muslims in Lebanon and declared war on the Christians. And that's when the civil war began in 1975. I was 10 years old when the war started. Uh, I, because of the presence of the Palestinians and because of the open border, uh, a lot of people, a lot of Muslims poured into from Arabic countries throughout the Middle East to help the Palestinians establish a presence in Lebanon. They wanted to use our open borders, our laws, our westernization, our fair and open-mindedness against us, using our laws against us. L people do not realize that Lebanon is a republic very much like the United States of America. So our enemy was able not only to infiltrate our country, but also use our existing laws to their benefit to establish their presence and twist the laws to their side. And we had many people in the country, including many Christians who actually marched with the Palestinians uh, uh, and the Islamists asking for more Islamic representations in the government for them, thinking that they're taking on the cause of the underdog. However, once the massacring began in 1975, once the Muslims became the majority and started taking over Christian cities and towns and uh, killing them, that's when the they would walk into the Christian homes. And some of those Christian leftists who basically demonstrated with the Islamists and said, 
What do you mean you're here to kill us and to slaughter us? We demonstrated with you. We pushed for your rights in the government. We pushed for you to take um, a part of, of whatever we had established. And the trends that we saw happening in Lebanon, once the Muslims and the Palestinians started massacring the Christians, and they would walk into Christian homes, and even some of them leftists who demonstrated with the Islamists and fought for a new laws to be established in the country to protect the presence of the Palestinians who came to the country under refugee status. Uh, the Muslims would kill them and they would tell them, you were as infidels as any other infidel and you deserve nothing but death. And those stories we heard from those who fled and came to our area, which was the last Christian area left in southern Lebanon. And this was the price that we paid for our open-mindedness and our tolerance of those who came into our country who had no intention of assimilating with us, who had no intention in becoming a part of the Lebanese society and advancing with our Western advancement in the Middle East, but wanted to come and once they became the majority, wanted to impose their backwardness, their way of life, their way of being on us, which brought our culture down. And today when you watch the news, you are no longer seeing Lebanon as Paris of the Middle East. You are seeing Lebanon as a terrorist infrastructure, a terrorist organization where Hezbollah, Iran, Syria, and the axis of evil have taken control of the country and basically now becoming a hotbed of Islamic extremists spend spreading their extremism all throughout the world once the call of jihad was uttered by the combined forces of the Muslims regardless what their background was they started massacring and killing the Christians they would walk into the Christian towns they would uh, massacre the elderly and the children as well as the men and women they would walk into a bomb shelter they would find a mother and a father hiding with a bomb shelter they would take one leg of the baby they would have have a little baby take one leg of the baby tie one leg to the mother and another leg to the father and then pull the parents apart splitting the child in half they would walk into our churches they would urinate and defecate on the altar using the Bible as toilet paper they would uh, crucify the Christian men on a cross and then put honey on their chest and on their private parts to kill them so they can be stung by bees as they died slowly this became the fate of the Christians during the Lebanese civil Civil war and which was by the way not a war between the Lebanese Christians and the Lebanese Muslims it was a war between the Lebanese Christians trying to defend their existence in the Middle East and their democracy in the Middle East and the Muslims who came from all around the Arabic world to fight with the Palestinians to create a base from which to fight Israel kill the Jews and throw them into the sea and take Lebanon and declare it an Islamic state and this is what they have been trying to do and they have successfully done that using our laws. Today, the Christians in Lebanon are less than 20%. And during the Lebanese Civil War, 160,000, an estimated 160,000 people died in Lebanon. 100,000 of them were Christians. So here we went prior to 1975, being majority of the population, 65% plus, to today being less than 20%. And today, those who are still living over there, if the United States or any other country would offer them visas to come to the West and leave the Middle East, they would do that in a heartbeat and leave with the shirt on their back.